Hi and welcome to Coding with Jesse. I'm Jesse Skinner and today I'm going to try a few different new things actually. Uh, first of all, this is the first stream where I'm streaming on both Twitch and YouTube, which is pretty exciting. Actually, it's the first time I've gone live on YouTube at all. Uh, and also, more importantly, I'm going to try, I believe it's called Svelte or Svelta. I actually don't have any idea. Hey, Fur Furierian. <laughs> Hey, Four. How's it going? Good to see you. Um, yeah, so I got, I'm using Restream, so my chat's a little different here and everything. Anyway, uh, what I thought to try out Svelte, as I'm going to call it, is uh, I'm going to try making tic-tac-toe. So I'm going to make a repository for this Svelte tic-tac-toe. I hope I'm spelling Svelte right. I'm such a noob that I actually don't know. I think so. Yeah, I think I got it right. Okay, so um, tic tac toe game made with Svelte. Keep it private, and let's make it. Uh, let's make it GNU GPL, and I think we're good. All right. So. I mean, I, I have tried Svelte in the in the um, REPL. So if you Google Svelte REPL, uh, oh, and by the way, there's like the snowbirds are flying overhead, so you will definitely hear them in the background. For those who don't know, the snowbirds are these. That's what's flying overhead right now, so it's going to be a little bit loud. There's an air show in town starts in about four hours and I guess they're warming up and practicing so yeah that's all right hopefully you can hear me over the jets that are flying overhead anyway this is the REPL mm. and you can just like I guess I could build the whole thing in the REPL would be cool um, but I kind of want to the parts I want to try out is like installing it and you know working locally so this is a really cool way to try it out though so what's neat about Svelte I'll just show you what I do know very little I do know um, it's kind of like view in a way that you um, you script a script tag and a style tag in here you can um, just code that way so I could do like h1 background yellow or whatever and then it's kind of more simple, simpler than uh, view because, well, let me show you. So if I make like a variable, like, let's call it variable. And we'll call it world by default. Then, or name actually is already there. Uh, name. Oh, there's some data here. See, I'm not even, this isn't exactly how I used it, so I'm not really sure, but we'll do it another place. Greeting. Let's call it hello. So we'll, use, we'll just keep whatever they're doing. Greeting. Undefined world. Uh, yeah, I, maybe this is kind of like interfering somehow with what I know. What if I delete that? Okay, I don't, I'm like lost now, but that's all right. Uh, I want to go to, like, the REPL I went to earlier, but I don't know where it is. Maybe this is the wrong one. I have no idea. Because it's a V2. So maybe I was using a different one. Yeah, this is what I was using today. Anyway. So you can put in, like, an input. Um, hey, non -Sola Vita. Yeah, it compiles smaller than view, which is pretty cool. So it's a compiling, um, just like a compiler. So what I mean is, if I do bind value to name, I think that's how it works. Then you can like type in here, and it's like so simple. And then you can see the actual output. That's a pretty neat feature here. So um, obviously there's the Svelte like framework itself, but then for the actual code I've written, it's pretty basic. It compiles to like just variables and DOM 
like calls and stuff. And let's see. That's a that's I guess this is <laughs> it might be an overstatement to say it's super simple, but it's pretty basic. Um so if I have nothing, let's say I just have a p, p tag high, then um, it creates this much. So basically this, this is the code for my markup. And that's really neat. I, I think that's really cool that it like actually turns my high into like dot text content equals high. I think that's really cool. Anyway, so let's try to install it. No, this is like a framework of its own. So Svelte is like, is like Vue, a replacement for Vue or a replacement for React. This this REPL I'm using is like a code pen kind of thing, specifically for for Svelte. Yeah. So you can try this out too. Um, I'll paste it in chat if you want to play around with it. It's very very easy to kind of get used to. Um. Yeah. So I'm like new to restream at the same time. So I'm curious, you know, I like, it went to both chats and then I don't know, I don't know how it works. I'm a total noob, so we'll see. Oh yeah, so it's actually like cross, the restream bot is like cross posting chat. So whatever chat you're in, you're going to be able to see chat from both. I don't know if that's annoying, but we'll see. Um, so I don't even know how to install it. All I've done is play with the REPL. So I need to get to the very, very basic 60 second quick start. That sounds about right. Yeah, the REPL, blah, blah, blah. At some point, your app will outgrow the REPL. You know, I could probably do the whole thing in the REPL. But I do want to, like, also learn about the development server so let's not I don't think I like want to install a zip file it seems like a weird way to do it yeah for sure and actually that's kind of what kicked me off to so Rich Harris is the uh, creator of Svelte and he wrote a blog post like uh, last week why I don't use web components and I'd actually I saw him at JSConf EU last year, so I I knew about Svelte for a while. But reading through like why he doesn't use web components was um, not the reason why I I guess it is because it like re-inspired me or um, he doesn't even talk about Svelte that much. But when he but I kind of was like oh yeah. Because this is Svelte. And I was like, yeah, that's so simple. And that's the web component. That's what he's trying to show. I was like, here's Svelte. And here is the web component equivalent. Oh, my God. They're just, like, breaking the sound barrier over and over again. So, yeah, here's the article. It's a good article. Anywho. That's the guy. So, um, ain't no problem. Let's try to install it, and I don't really want to do a zip file. I don't know why the zip file seems like a weird. Oh, like, I see. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. So you can start with the REPL, and then click download, and it'll, the code you've written in the REPL will be in the zip. That's what it is. Um, I guess we can go through that process. Oh here, digit. If you can skip messing with zip files by using dead digit, digit. Um, how would that work? You know what I learned about is like npm init. So if they anyway, I don't want to get too much into that, but this will work too. So let's do that then. Um, once you've tinkered a bit, which I haven't, and understood how everything fits together, which I don't, then you can fork. Oh, you can make your own template. 
Oh, that's a neat idea. That's a really neat idea. Anyway, let's just start with this. And um, actually, I want to check out my uh, GitHub project first. Have to get better in vanilla JavaScript before you throw yourself into a framework. I, th I feel like Svelte might be a good. No, I don't know. You're probably right. Like, it's, it's nice to get to know some DOM scripting and stuff, but I feel like Svelte gets closer to. Maybe not. It's probably the same as Vue. I was going to say, like, closer to. Not closer to the metal exactly, but, like, it simulates actual web dev a little bit, but then again it doesn't because it has a lot of its own things. So. Um, so if I, where was I? npx digit this thing. And then let's call it svelte tic-tac-toe. And let's we'll see what happens. Aborting. Well, I kind of, you know, So what do we get? What do we get? Um, open folder. Uh, there we go. We get a public folder, a source folder, and that's not too much. And it uses rollup by default, which is actually cool because I was planning to use rollup. Um, so what do we get? We get a main JS. And then that's the actual app. Uh, let's search marketplace. Hmm. Hmm. Which one? The one that has one point. Oh, that's kind of misleading. It's a winter. I don't even know why Svelte matches with it. This would be the one. I guess it's like it probably has it in the description or something. Anyway. Go back to here, and now I got, you know, it looks better. Um, yeah, let's make tic tac toe. I guess. So npm install, npm run dev, seems legit. I'm gonna do the rest of it in the, in here. Hello, there we go. npm install. So this will be the most boring, like, oh, it's almost done. That's pretty fast. And actually, this is really fast compared to, like, Create React App is, I don't know, it takes forever. Uh, what else do I need to do? NPM run dev, wasn't it? So that's cute. Okay. And I should just be able to open that. And we got hello world. So that's so far so good. I'm gonna leave that closed and let's make tic tac toe. So <laughs> where to begin, right? So it's already made a bundle. Let's see what the bundle looks like. It's not minified, but that's kind of better than we can see what it does. I'm just always curious, like what, what's going on? Is this not wrapping? There we go. Okay. So part of this is like seeing what rollup does. Rollup doesn't do that much. Doesn't add much overhead. So you see like helper functions, text. Is this document create text node and stuff like that? Element create element. So that's, that's what I mean by it being like kind of close to the wire. To the metal. And there's really not that much code. This is the whole thing. This is all of it. Can you imagine like the bundle of React? Is it's definitely not three hundred something lines. Unminified. Uh, yeah, it's neat. It's really cool. So far, so good. All right, let's actually program something. I feel like the rest of this uh, stream is going to be like 
just basic programming. Like, I might, you know what I mean? Like, this felt, this felt so minimal, but, well, we'll see. We will see. Okay, so I want to, I could just do it all in app, but I'm kind of curious to, to do, like, multiple modules. And with tic-tac-toe, there's probably not that many things. So let's start with a board or something. We'll call it board dot svelte. And I guess the board is going to render a table with nine cells. Um, I haven't really thought this through very much. So actually, instead of rendering the cells directly, I want I think I want to have it loops. So the board itself will be like nested arrays like that comma and then three of them and I guess that's it so let's and let's put some X's and O's in it just to like be able to see something when I render it So we will, um, from memory, you do, it's kind of like a mustache-ish syntax for loops and stuff. Uh, I think you do board as, so this will be like row mithril. I've looked at it, but I haven't tried it. Have you tried it? Do you do this? Or just that? Probably that. It's giving me empty block. Okay, so I'm doing something right. So we'll have a row, and then each row as column. And then we'll have a column, and then we'll just put the value of the column in there. So then I need to import board from board that's well I guess and then I'll call it tic-tac-toe and then you do this so does that work yes not bad right need some styling yeah I've looked at a lot of different frameworks over the over the years and I don't often like actually try them out too much, um, but this one, this one excites me. So let's do some styling in here so it doesn't look like garbage. Uh, let's say table um, min width. Like, how do I want to do it? It should be like pretty. It should be pretty big, but not. I guess I can do. Uh, with maybe with a hundred percent, but like max width, um, something more reasonable, eight hundred, something like that. Does that work? Then TD will have a border of let's do like nines, and then do border collapse. How's that look? Pretty good. So we'll do text align center. Um, let's crank the font size up quite a bit to should I define it like vertical width, maybe? Which would be not no, let's just do like a, a big EM twenty four, something like that. Oh that'd be huge, isn't it? Sixteen. Eight. That's pretty good. How does that look? I don't know why I even care about mobile this early in the game, but yeah, it should work. Uh, let me mount this to the right, and then I don't. I don't need to simulate mobile. I'll just do this. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
good enough for today, I believe. So, I'm like half done, kinda. Like, I feel like this will be so easy that, yeah, we'll see. All right, what else do I even have to do, really, you know? Just like click actions. Um, yeah. I'll leave that empty for now. I don't need a name. So I might do like, anyway, it's going to start off empty. I was going to say I might do, add like, a, I thought a reset game or uh, something like that. So we need to know whose turn it is. And I don't know what traditional is, but let's say X goes first. Then I need like a click handler on here. So I, you do on colon click. That's that's the spell way. And then need to call like a function that doesn't exist. Hey, let me code. How's it going? Oh seven. What does that mean? Or is that like a? It's like a hand waving. Oh hi. Uh, so this will be interesting. I need to like figure out which column, like where in here, it's changing. Now there's kind of like different ways to do that. I could try to track which index I'm at somehow. I might be able to do like a bind where I call on click or I like to set and then I have to know like all right, we got to go in the Svelte docs. I knew this. I knew this would come. I knew this moment would come. Each as... Oh, you do a comma index. Okay. Um, row index and column index, I guess. It's a bit verbose. I could do I and J. Well, let's just leave it. Uh, let's call it click. And here we'll just call it row and column. Uh, no, let's keep it consistent, I guess. Even, it, even though it's super verbose. And so what we do is we just set. That's what's so cool is like you don't have to call set state or any crap like that. You just do that. You just set a variable that's local. And I don't know if I did it right. Oh, that, here. Let's uh, let's try it. Oh, that's horrible. I need to set some minimum height here. Um, or just set a height. Does that work? Whoa! Check it out. Okay, I need to go like a little bit more than one EM. It's so awesome. Unbelievably awesome. Alright, uh, I also need to like, once you've clicked one, you can't click it again, right? So, what we'll say is if there's nothing there, then we'll set it. Otherwise, we kind of ign end up ignoring it, right? And uh, we also need to like change whose turn it is. Which I'll do with this. Pretty simple. We're just gonna swap that back and forth. And it's pretty cool. So now it's like X O X O. I think we're done. I think I just made a tic tac toe game. Uh. <laughs> And now you can't click anything. So I need like a reset button. Oh my god. I'm just like stunned how fast that was. So, okay, let's get into some trickier things. And maybe I'll like make this harder for no reason. Um, so let's add a reset button. Or like new game. 
and we'll do that same on colon click. And what would this function do? Obviously, I could put it inside board, and that would be sort of easy enough. But I want to not have it in there and then find a way to talk. Now, I know one thing we can do is if I export the board, then like my tabs are messed up with that. It wants to do two, and I, anyway. Then I can pass a board as props. Um, so let's just do that. Let's do something like even weirder. That doesn't make any sense. But just to like prove proof of concept. So I can pass in a board because I ex it's kind of counterintuitive, but because I exported this variable, that becomes a prop, and then this is the default value. So that could be an approach where oh hey, it's pretty good to see you. How's it going? It's my first uh first YouTube live stream. So definitely different. I mean it's not that different. I don't know if anyone's watching on YouTube anyway. So far no one's chatting on YouTube, so that's fine. <laughs> um yeah, so I could definitely like also what's crazy is like I'm less than half an hour in and I'm basically done my tic tac toe game. What is that? What would happen? What do you what happens if you do like undefined? Is it gonna default to Yeah, okay. The default. But let's say I don't want to manage the board state outside of here. I don't think that's a good approach. It just is an option, but not, not one that I like. So I think it'd be cooler to have a function that I can call somehow from out here. Or how would I do it? I wonder. Maybe there's a way to like export a function. That would just set this, basically. Well, that's then. I don't know if that works because that's like a prop then. But I wonder if I can get it out of here somehow. Maybe not. No, see, that's not doing anything. Do I get an error for that? No. Somehow it is there. Like, what if I do an alert in here? Nothing. So it's not actually calling this at all, I don't think. Even though it seems like I have access to that function, and I can click to it, and it shows it's there. But I can't call it. Here, let's just console log what it is when I do click. Oh, you know what? I'm probably getting errors somewhere else here. New game is not exported. Uh, yes, it is. But it's not actually. Okay, so I think I ran into like a little bit of a bug. It's probably a bug actually in my, like in the VS Code thing rather than in Svelte. This is not the way to do it. So how would I, how would I, I know there's a way to like set, but again, I don't want to, I want to somehow trigger like an event. All right, let's read the docs. Is there some way to tell? Or is there a way to like put a new board there? That would work too. Like somehow un unmount that board and create a new one. Yeah, I, I mean, I could do this, but that's not really what I want to do. Um, I know you can set properties. Um, 
I could destroy it. Um, like, how would I do it? How would you do it in React? It'd be just as weird, because you can't really, you don't get functions back from a child. What would you do? You could set, like, a key on it, and that would wipe its state. You could manage, I guess you'd manage the state outside. So that's kind of like, that's the equivalent of having board be a prop. And then, so it could come, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Let's make, let's make board a prop. And then, you know what I'm getting as like, some kind of state management that's higher level. Um, so I could kind of, I could do it in like not Svelte, but in just like a JavaScript file module. Let's try that. Let's see. Uh, so in a way, that's also the board. I don't know what to call it. Board.js and board.svelte. One's the actual board. One's like the rendering of it. Um, but it's not going to trigger. Yeah, I guess so. I could have basically all this stuff in a different place and then have it get passed in. Is that syntactically allowed? No. Has to have a default. So I'm going to create a board. I'm just experimenting at this point. Like, There's a lot of different ways to do this. From, and I don't have this yet, but that's what I'm thinking. Create board, and I just want to actually return this. And I guess it could be like create game. Mm. Bear with me as I like mess around. So in this case, the board is that, it's this person's turn, and then we can just kind of put everything in there, and then not, not have like a new game reset thing, but we'll return like click and board. And it's not formatting, which tells me I did something wrong. Oh, it is. Never mind. So, uh, let's get back to the state where it's going to let me do anything. Now it's still freaking out. Create board is not exported by source board. I thought it was. Oh, create. Yeah, yeah. Create game. Now it's rendering. Create board is not defined. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's no board. Right. Because it's actually like this. Um. You can't do that. Uh, I guess the point was that I'm not going to do that. What I was going to do is do that up here. Board is one of those words that, like, the more you look at it, the weirder it gets. I feel like it's misspelled now, like board. Anyway. Then we can make this, like, I don't know if you call it this, but a pure, pure component, no script. Oh, we do have to have script because we have to basically declare our um, props and click. And then we're going to pass those in. And I think there's a sh let's just try that and see if it works. 
Well, I can't click anything. Um, what am I doing wrong? It is like rendering, just not rendering what I thought it would. Hmm. <laughs> Let's console log board. Does that work? Yep. And there's stuff in it. Well, I mean, it's empty, but that's valid. Can I just do like this? Is that also valid? Seems so. And. Uh, so why doesn't clicking work? That's working. But I'm guessing that the whole, like, setter thing doesn't work when the state is here. What I mean is, like, when you set stuff inside Svelte, it knows to invalidate the cache. But it's not going to work, like, obviously, that's probably what it is. So it doesn't know that it's time to re-render when I click something. Hmm. That's tricky then. How would you, I know you can do like set. So I guess what we could do is kind of like set, so like the click, thinking of we can make like a different function that tells board oh, you have to like programmatically create a component that way and I don't I wasn't planning to do that hmm I'm just looking for like some kind of state management uh, hints. Or maybe I have to do it all in there. So I guess I could have, no. I was gonna say like make a component that just manages the state. That might be an option, I don't know. So, which approach should I use here? I could, I don't know. Oh, context? Have you used this uh, USB? Ooh, context. Yeah, this looks helpful. So let's read through this a little bit. A mechanism for components to talk to each other without passing around data and functions is props. It's an advanced feature. I love that I'm like, well, with your help, but I, I love that I'm hitting up the advanced features already. I'm like less than an hour into this. Because it's so simple. Uh, it's almost boring. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's boring. There are two halves to the context API. Set context, get context. If a component calls set context, key context, then any child component can retrieve the context with get context of that key. Okay. So yeah, you get set context from Svelte. And then, so I think, let me try this. I assume that in my app, I can do that. I don't really need on map, I don't think. And then I can set context, how does it work? Key, key value store, it's advanced. Board, 
and then the context itself could be the board, I assume. Uh, or like, we could do it this way, maybe. Game. Maybe tic-tac-toe would be appropriate. Because you know this website might support multiple games one day. Probably not. Um, then what? Could be whatever you want. Since map hasn't created since the component is mounted, our context object contains a get map function rather than map itself. Um, that's true for like map box, but for us we can create a board before anything. And then on the other side, you get it out. So again, I'd have to get context there. And then, really, I don't even need to pass anything to it. It eliminates this. And then I would just get board and click from get context, which I got to fix get rather than set. And is that it? No. Get context is undefined. So I didn't do it right. Why not? Is get context really undefined or it's weird. Weird that it would be. Do I have to refresh? No. Why would it be undefined? Uh, it is there. Is it because it's like throwing a type error? Like, did I mess something else up? Game. Yeah. All right. So there's a pull request. <laughs> it's like. If you're going to throw a type error, be more specific. That's OK. Is that it, though? Yeah, it's kind of working. It's still not re-rendering. So I need to, what? I still need to like set context to update it every time. special elements. I don't know about that. Alright, so I kind of have the same problem where it doesn't know it's time to re-render. And I assume maybe we should do it a little different. Like like maybe app. I don't want board to know about Svelte. That's kind of my point. So app has to be the controller between this is like my model. Whoa. This is my model. Apps the controller and boards the view. That's kind of how I'm going about this. So it's app's job to wire these up. So we can say board and then click needs to kind of map the two. And I don't know. I know this will probably work, but I don't know if I love it. Because now it's got to, like, again, set the context. Let's do this separately, actually. And then we could probably use it as a prop, like an on-click. So board's going to come from context. And then we'll call this, like, on-click. Um, And it's going to call, it's going to just pass it on. And then call set context again, which seems, I don't know, there might be a better way to do this. Then I'm going to pass uh, on click like that. So this is going to get a board from board, but then it's going to export. Let's say const on click. 
which will be a prop that we'll call here. What's wrong? Unexpected token because I don't set something. Is that better? Okay. Oh, I see. Like const has to have a de definition. Let doesn't. That's fine. Okay. Function called outside component initialization. Oh, like you don't set context again. That's a one-time deal. How do you update the context? Am I missing something? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it still doesn't c trigger a re-render. Context keys. I guess let's look at this. See how they're doing it. Yeah, they've get map, but I think it's like a one time deal, right? Like they make a map and a key. They're using that instead of a string. That's cute. I guess you could use a symbol too. And then they get that and they set that and that just lets you Wait, what's map? No, map's down here. And map gets set on mount. Okay. So there's a bit of magic, and that's what I'm not understanding. So then by the time this renders, it can get access to this variable. But I still don't see how to like trigger it updating. Hmm. Let's see. So it's kind of a one time deal too. I think I need to like maybe I do need to sort of pass the board through. Um, that's the same thing as this, and then, uh, I don't know, it's kind of awkward, right? I guess I could have, like, a component. It seems like a lot of, it's, like, too much stuff to have in the app, but... Hmm. I could like write it a bit different so that it has a local variable. For example, I could return board. Or like would would that even trigger re-render? Because it's anyway, let's try it. So what I'm thinking is we have a local variable. We'll have a local board. Um, well, we have that board. Can I do let? Probably not. Yeah, it's okay. So let's not use context. Let's just pass it through. I'll take our context here. We're going to have board and on click. And then. Is this enough to trigger re-render? On click is not a function. I think. Oh. Right. Um. Let's call it on click. I think that's what I call it in board too, right? Okay. Now we're getting back to something. That's pretty good. 
Okay, that's not too bad. I mean, it's not super ugly. It's a bit awkward. There might be a smoother way to do it. I'm just not sure right now. But it, so an easy workaround is like you have a very you have a let variable and then you assign something to it. That'll force a re-render. So it's kind of tricking the compiler. Um, because board doesn't actually change, like it's still I could I could also do it like I think I could probably do it a different way where I just have some bullshit excuse my language. <laughs> I'm trying to be more family friendly here. Where I just have some like click count. I bet this would work. But then I have this like awkward extra variable just to trigger a re-render. Does that work? No, then it doesn't. Okay, so it's a little bit smart. It knows board hasn't changed. And that's probably for the best. I don't like that workaround. So, but that wouldn't be good enough either. No, I have to assign, I could probably do this. Would that work? Is it dumb? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's how you force a re-render in Svelte. I don't know. <laughs> There's got to be a better way to do it than that. I mean, this looks at least, like, functional or something. They're both... I don't know. I don't know which one I prefer. They're both weird. So... I'm, I don't know. Okay, so we can do our reset... Um, reset button now. So how that will work is say new game and all that's going to do is call that again. You can't do that. Why can't you deconstruct without a let? So I gotta do something weird like game and then like board equals game dot board. Click equals game dot click. Can I deconstruct like now if I do that? Still not. A, okay. So that'll probably work. Yeah. Pretty good. I just feel like there's got to be a better way to do some of this stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it would be. So, like, Svelte's doing a lot of cool stuff. It's a little bit magic in the sense that, like, you can assign to trigger an update, but you can't do... You can't assign outside of Svelte. So, like... I have to do that. I wonder if it would be smart enough. If I had to pass board in, would it, like, realize that that might get mutated? Probably not. Well, I could, like, I could do it that way, but I'd still have to do it kind of functional where it returns, probably. But, no, I don't think this will work, no. So, yeah, I could have, like, a separate... Um, update game function that is this. That doesn't have, like, a local state. And then... Oh, no, but I need to... I need turn the state. So I don't want to manage all of it outside, now. This is pretty good. I just feel like there's probably a different way to do it. I don't know what it would be. All right, we'll leave it at this. This though, this though, I'm not sure about that. It's awkward, but 
Like, I only have two variables here. It could be a lot more, right? It could be a lot more functions. <laughs> it just seems like there's... Why can't I deconstruct without doing that? Oh, well. So, I guess I'm done. What do I want to change? I'll rename this. No renaming. Let's do camel case. Uh, and detect wind condition. I like that. That'll that'll take some time. Column index is undefined in just testing out the map stuff. It's not giving me a line. This is Firefox, though. Oh, there. Column index is undefined. Oh, because I still have that. Detect wind condition. That's a good one, because then, again, I have to, like, pass the message through somehow. Detect wind condition. So I need to, like, every time I set it, we need to check. Um, if is winner, or how should I do it? I just do all the code here, and then I'll refactor it. So to see if someone wins, ooh, quickest way would be um, check rows, check columns, check diagonals. I could do is like a million if statements. If board, I, uh, maybe I'll just start with a million if statements and then. Oh, this is gonna be horrible. I shouldn't do that. And board zero zero is equal to board zero two. Then return that person, and then this will be in a function like get winner there's gonna be like a million better ways to write this but I'll just start with the brute force because it's not that much to it right so we're doing the rows and then the third row and then there'll be three for columns this is ugly as hell but okay so already I can replace this with like a for loop right There's my rows. Uh, and then we'll do the same for columns. Well, not the exact same, it would be a little different here. So we're going to cut column and put it on the other side of that. And then the diagonals, I might just hard code because there's just two of them. If board of zero zero equals board of one one, and board of zero zero equals board of two two. Return the and then the inverse too. Uh, so two two. We'll start, no, first row, top corner, middle, first row, top corner, and zero, two, no, two, zero. And then we'll return this one. Otherwise, we'll return, we just won't return anything. So... It const winner equals get winner. If winner, then we're going to trigger some kind of event. I don't know how to even do that. On win, a function callback. Winner. Seems good. 
seems like a decent API. Bit ugly, but whatever. Should work. Um, I could I could have this outside of the game. I don't know if that is good or bad, but then we'd be able to like test it in theory. Anyway. So when we create the game, we're going to pass it a function and it's going to set something. Uh, or last winner or something. And then um, they'll like set last winner equals winner. I might I'll probably re rework this in a sec, but so what should happen? Or maybe it's just just alert. We can just do an alert. Uh, say winner wins. No, we don't need to worry about all that stuff. And then let's automatically start a new game. Let's try it out. X O X O X O X X wins, but before it rendered. Before it rendered. That's awkward because I have the alert. So if I wasn't doing an alert, then so I could just do like a set timeout so that it renders one moment after. Probably good. Yeah. Sweet. That's pretty good. And, uh, like, I'm just amazed at how simple this is, really. This is, like, the whole controller. I feel like it could be even simpler, and I just don't. I just can't wrap my head around how. But. Like, I guess there could be a single variable I could pass game through. Let's do that. That might be a little bit neater. And then, but then we have to, like, update game every time. Which is the still awkward and a little bit magic-y that I don't love. But again, I don't have a better, a better approach to doing that. Board needs to return then game, which is also awkward. Um, well, I guess I could just do like a huge return board that. But see, I'm, it's like forcing me to change my API a little bit. I don't, I don't like that too much. I don't like that the... No, let's not change the API. Let's like make that a constraint. That this is how our, you know, this is something maybe we don't have control over. This is just how this game is written. Let's not even return board. Let's make it imperative and force this to do the weird thing. So this is that's where we'll do this, and let's document it. Force re-render. Re-render. And there's probably a better way to do that, like a more obvious way. But for now, let's do that, and then board will. This board. We'll have let game, and then we have to like do game dot board, and game dot on click. Which isn't too bad. Do we still have a game here? No, it's broken. Game on click is not a function because it's called click. Now what? Now what? Is this game equals game thing not working? Oh, 
this doesn't get called anymore. Uh, I thought that was not a good idea. Like I needed, I needed it to be separate so that I could hook into it to trigger a re-render. So now I don't have that. Maybe there's a different way to trigger a re-render. I don't know. It seems like a um, a bad pattern, but who knows? Custom element. Just assigned to a locally declared variable. <laughs> like, yeah, I kind of know that would work. It just seems like a bad idea. I mean, this could even trigger it, so I could have, like, let count equals zero. Or... <sighs> it could be called render. And it doesn't do anything, it just assigns to undefined. Would that work? That'd be so weird. But I have a feeling it will work. No. It would be sweet if that's like all I had to do. You design with the view that elements render from locally stored state so it all falls out naturally. Let me unpack what you mean by that. Like you don't do it this way is what you mean? There's gotta be a way to like have a model. So what I would do like in React here is, uh, what would I do? It's the same problem, it's not like a cell problem. I'm just trying to do something awkward that pushes the framework to limits, but. What if I, what if I use that render variable, is that, the, is that why? I'm rendering, I need a local variable to store the current render state, which may not be the model state. Hmm. What if game click returned like a number, a random number, let's say. Is that, is that working? Yeah, so it's re-rendering, just not re- And it's updating the state, it's just not re-rendering the board. So it doesn't know the board has changed. So it's doing some kind of optimization where it's like not re-rendering this part because it doesn't think it changed. Okay, so if you're doing this model kind of thing, I feel like you need to, uh, like, the game should return itself in a kind of jQuery-esque thing. Mm, like, return this. I don't want to do that. Again, I it'd be cool if I didn't have to update this model. update the render state. I could return board like I did before and then set like game.board. That might work. Yeah, it does. It's weird. It works. I don't know how I feel about like that assignment thing. But like you said, I could have, I could do this, right? And then I could have it call click and then set board again equals game.board. So as if I was like reaccessing it. Uh, and let's call this on click. Uh, well, I'll just leave it there for now. Like that works. It's weird, but it works. That's kind of what you mean, right? It's be is like have a variable 
that represents the current render state and then reassign it. Weird that this is necessary, but Svelte needs to know it changed. Because what happens actually, we can have a look from what I've seen in the REPL. It, it does like a, uh, so I have quite a bit of code, but not like a ton more. I have 300 more lines of code with the whole game written. It does this invalidate. So when it does, when you do an assignment, it wraps it in like a cache invalidation. So I should be able to find specifically that on click somewhere. That's app. Oh, here's board. Okay. That's here's the board component. And uh, yeah, it was right there actually. So when I do it's here. This is my comment. My comment even persists into <laughs> that's actually amazing. That your comment ends up in the bundle. That's mind blowing. Anyway, so that's what I'm basically doing. I'm just like forcing it in validation when I set this. Maybe there's a way to like explicitly invalidate the cache on that. But I think this isn't bad. It's just a bit weird. Um, I guess I could probably do that like other weird thing where I just do game equals game. No, then it doesn't. So what, what does the bundle look like then? It doesn't validate game, but somehow not game dot board or not the board variable. Wait, why wouldn't that's weird. Like it seems like if you invalidate game, then it should re-render this. Oh, it, cause I have like a separate variable. Yeah, that actually makes sense. So if I have game dot board, now it should re-render. Yeah. Syntactic magic for design, something like the UI registering to get events for particular model changes. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly like that. Which is neat. Like that's that's what a lot of frameworks are trying to do, right? Is like find different ways. I mean, when I when like in the Ember days, Angular Ember days, the way people talked, the most important thing was like two-way data bindings, which I don't know why that's so important, but it seems like every framework was like trying to design its way around how to make two-way data bindings easy. <laughs> this is like such a weird thing, but I guess that's fine. I don't know. Like I feel icky a little bit about it because it seems like a no-op that's doing some magic. But at the same time, I don't know. It's, it's like simple as hell. So is this like, is this like an anti-pattern or is this like, of course you have to do it that way. I'm not sure. Writing my own framework, like replacing Svelte with some other thing. Is that what you're talking about? I don't think I could do a better job than, than Svelte, um, to be honest. To have the updated state returned. Yeah, that's true. Like, if it was something like game, and then I had, like, let board equals game dot get board. Yeah, you want me to, to make my own Svelte? <laughs> How would I even do it? I have some ideas of like, I've talked about on stream before, like what my perfect kind of setup would be. 
and it would be something where it's almost um, it's as close to like just doing it in the browser with no extra stuff and then just have like a build step that uh, brings it to life sort of or makes it, like optimizes it uh, I feel like Svelte gets pretty close to that not totally but pretty close hmm something so like I wonder if you have a lot of style having it in the same file I guess that's a good thing right because it's like if I have a table somewhere else I'm not affecting it with this style there's some magic there too so I was gonna say like maybe it'd be good to be able to link in a separate file but and maybe you can I can look into that this is like I'm pretty happy that this is how simple that is uh, oh yeah I was in the middle of trying something so if I did it like board equals game dot get board and then I I repeated that there it would seem less stupid it would seem like less weird it would just be like yeah you updated the state now you need to get the new state then I I would have to like have a getter which I don't like need but if I did my API designs that way it would it would make sense right It still works, right? No. Uh, oh, this has to be bored. I wonder. I wonder if I can do game dot get bored here. What what the impacts of that would be? The impact is it doesn't work. Does it have an error? No. It just doesn't know. So you're gonna want to have like a variable. That's like an important mechanism to spell. Which is a little bit weird. I can see for like new, someone new to programming, this would be, I mean, even to me, I've been doing this forever and it's a little bit weird, a little bit unpredictable. But it's only when you try to do fancy stuff that it doesn't work. Oh, new game isn't triggering a re-render anymore until you click again. Workarounds for the assignment thing, thank you. Because Svelte's reactivity is triggered by assignments, using array methods like push and splice won't automatically cause updates. Add an assignment that would otherwise be redundant. Oh, that's, yeah. But there's a more idiomatic solution. which is like don't do that <laughs> which is like you create a different array every time so be like what do you call it um immutable use immutable data but i'm not doing arrays i'm doing an object i could like have a new ob i guess it is arrays isn't it my board is an array uh find a way to make an assignment you're right so that's kind of like what I've ended up doing with this. That's a way to make an assignment. But you know what? Now my new game button broke somehow. Uh, because when it re-triggers game updating, for some reason it doesn't call this again. which is tricky. You know what, I guess there's probably a, a life cycle method that lets me do it. What are the life cycle methods? Uh, before update, after update, so one of these. Let's say before update. And it also which one would be better before or after? It probably doesn't matter. So 
So if I do it in there, I'm gonna be able to listen to updates. I need to have like also let board, and then I'm gonna sign it. Mm-hmm. Oops. That'll probably work. Yep. It's like more verbose. What did I what did I lose? Why did that happen? Because So if I I don't need to do that if I go back to doing not that, just this reference game dot board and then do some nonsense like game equals game. Then I could probably do this. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, and again, I could do it like part of my, the way I design my API to make it immutable or to at least like <laughs> return Board, let's say, which I could do by having game. Well, there's a bunch of different ways. I don't like, I, I don't like using this, the this variable, or whatever you call it. Does that work? No, because there's no more get board. So now it's board. That works. Um, it is getting simpler. I think I would lean towards this. So that's something to bear in mind. Like, if you're using separate models, you need, you'd probably want to lean in the direction of doing it in some kind of immutable way where it's returning something. Yeah. This is super simple now, though. So there's a benefit of that. It's kind of a weird trick because it's not actually immutable, and I don't need it to be. I could have it like return a new array, like create a new array every time. I don't, I don't need to do that. Um, let's write it also just for. F I don't know if it's fun, but as a module, so return board. We'll do it with like a this. Turn will be private. And then we'll click. We'll do that as like a this thing. And then we can return this. Not that. One more thing. Oops. Uh, so then we have to reference this dot board, which I don't like. That'll probably work too. Yeah. So if you design it that way, where it's like returning, so that you can, this is what you would do to like be able to chain methods. It's not a bad idea. It's like Douglas Crockford says you should always return this by default, if nothing else. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those like, it's kind of awkward. So I could do this as a class too. I don't know if I'm going to regret doing it as a class. On win. Um, let's have that as a... Can I just like start using private variables? Wait, how do you... What am I doing wrong? Is it just that class instance variables aren't standard yet? Okay, whatever. I don't like this pattern, so I'm probably just going to undo, undo, undo.
so this would be like see now we have this everywhere and I don't like that the thing I regret about JavaScript putting like this dot as the way that you access property variables because like the whole nice thing about C++ is that you don't have to do that that's just assignments and then it knows that they're part of the instance we kind of lose that in JavaScript but that's simpler code then I have to like I'm gonna still leave that as a separate thing that should probably work you gotta go this dot turn this dot this dot this dot this dot I don't like that but it'll work right oh then we have to sign like this dot on when And then we have to reference this dot on when, or some kind of like options. Then when I create it, um, did I call it tic tac toe? Then you would do like new tic tac toe. Uh, then you have to make a new one, which, oh, there was a bug before. I didn't even realize because it was calling create game. Yeah, let's make this a separate function on win. Uh, player or winner. I already had, I already had a name for that, of course. Then we do it again. I'm just thinking like I could also not do that and then call new game. I think I'd rather have it repeated. I'm not sure. Or I could have like my own function create game. Uh, I'm like over optimizing my structure of this made up thing, but and then I'll go back to having it in line. And I'll return it rather. So this will also create a game. That's pretty clean. And uh, I don't like, like I don't love this class-based approach. I can rewrite it though, again. I'll rewrite it back. New game, I can still be a winner. Well, oh, I need to, I guess I need to detect tie game too. It wouldn't be a bad idea. So I'm O, X, O. New game, X, O, X, O, X. Okay. Um, detecting tie game would probably be a good idea. But I'm going to, just because I love refactoring as my favorite thing in the world, I'm going to uh, rewrite this again as a function. Has, I just think it's such a better interface the module pattern so then this goes back to being let board is a const we have um, click so we're, we are going to return an object with board and I guess click this will work and then make this a function, or I can make it inline. I would usually do that. Uh, then we don't need this dot anything, but we will still return this. So it just gets. I still have one this, 
but that's what I need for that workaround. Yeah. What else can we do? I don't know. I think I, I've explored a lot of the Svelte um, API, which is so simple that it boggles the mind. <laughs> Alright, so if I was going to modify, let's do, I think having detection for a tie game will make this like a complete minimal viable product. Minimum viable product. So let's change this a little. And then on tie, not on time update. Thank you for helping. We're going to also set time at almost the same thing, but we're going to say tie game. I need a comma and what am I missing? This goes there, this goes there, this goes there. Something doesn't balance out. Do I not need a Yeah, I think I need a comma. Uh, some, it's hard to like parse with your brain. Oh, it's this thing. Is that it? Because then that's that. This is that. Oh, I need one more curly. There we go. Then I need to change my API here. This is going to become on win, on tie. And I guess we could have like else if board is board full, then we're going to on tie. And we need a new function that just checks for that. And that can just simply loop over the rows and the columns and if it finds an entry that's not um, if it's an empty string or let's, I guess we need to say if not that return false Otherwise, we're going to return true. And we could kind of like hyper optimize this. That first we check if the board is full. And if there's a winner. I don't know. Then we're going to do one or the other. I guess that's readable-ish. X wins. Okay, I gotta play like a different way. X. O. X. O. Oh, X wins. X is just too good. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to like play tic tac toe to lose. So X O. X. O X tie game. All right, I think we have. I think once I'm gonna take out the new game automatically happening, because you might want to be like, check out this amazing game we had, and show it off to someone. I don't know. I don't know why you would. X wins. I think we're done. I think I did it. I don't know. That's crazy. Pretty happy with it though. Um, it's kind of mind-boggling how simple this was.
I think this whole function could be in come from there. Just because it does alert. It might be like, nah, I don't know. I, I think I said belongs in the controller. Because if I wanted to like update the DOM instead, let's do that. Or let's leave it empty and then message. Then I don't need to do a timeout. I'll just say message equals winner wins or message equals tie game. That'll be a little simpler. And then I'll just render it. How do you do like conditional rendering? That's that's the question. So how do what how would I say like message and can you do that? Like in React? Probably not. Yes, maybe. No. Um tweening the X and O font size. <laughs> For tweening variables. Tweening. Like animating? Ah, uh, what am I looking for? So much stuff in here. Oh, thanks. All right, setting values and watching the DOM update automatically is cool. You know, it's even cooler tweening those values. Um, writable, writable. What does that do? Let's you do dot set. That's weird. You know what else is weird? That this is in quotes. It doesn't seem like you'd need to do it in quotes. I don't know why they did it that way in the example. Maybe that's like the old way you had to do it. Anyway. Yeah, it would be fun. I'm not sure, like, I don't picture how it would work, but it's a funny idea. Um, tick. You can call it any time. Returns a promise that resolves as soon as any pending state changes have been applied. Oh, it's like a callback to set state. That makes sense. This. Uh. Anyway, what am I actually looking for? I was in the middle of doing something. I was in the middle of, oh, conditional. So let's see the, um, I guess it's an if block, kind of. That's what I want. That's conditional. So you do if message, message, and then presumably that. X wins, new game. Need to reset that every time. So create game will set message to undefined, I guess, or null, good enough. Can't access lexical declaration message before initialize. Oh, because the order is wrong. Right. Yeah, it's not bad. Um. I guess I could do like H2 display inline as the, a quick fix so it looks better. Not bad. Yeah, I think I might wrap it up now. Um, I wasn't going to do that long of a stream because I still have some work to do today. But I think it's, uh, I think this is like so awesome. I'm like so impressed with Svelte. I'm definitely gonna keep trying it out. And I think, I think it's already made us like a build, right? I don't know, like, 
package.json, what else can you do? Scripts, build, auto build, dev, start. So if I kill our npm run dev and just do npm start, um, it's the same thing. But I think if I, I should do npm run build, and I assume that's going to be a production build. And then if I refresh, it's not going to have that warning. X wins. Yep. And let's see like what we got. So this is HTML. It couldn't be simpler. Oh, that's a thing we can actually try. Out is let's uh, set the title. So the way you set the title is you use svelte colon head, I believe. And then you can like set stuff in there. So. Uh, let's go back to running dev for a minute. Yeah, it did update the title. I don't know why this isn't updating. Or it's like, oh, I see. So that still gets served by the, it's still in the build. It's just not, it gets updated with like document.title. Um, Well, I guess, do we have, I don't know how you would like hook into that properly. Uh, HTML tags, that's not exactly what I want. Um, I'm gonna have to read through this guide because I think there's, like I haven't covered nearly, I've probably covered like just a percent, a small percent of this, even though that got me like super far. Well, you can do server-side rendering mode too, which is interesting. Um, I would like to see that. How do you trigger that? Like, is it is it gonna put more HTML in my index HTML? Or how do you do server-side rendering? The debug tag, what's that? I'm just on like crazy tangents here. Debug user. Interesting. I'll have to play with that sometime. Okay, let's try to focus a little bit. Making an app. Okay. Oh, dot svelte is just dot HTML. That's true. I like that. Um, I just want to find server side rendering. I just don't see it in here. I wonder if Google knows how to find stuff. Yeah, let's look in this like. Let's see how his package JSON works. So it's a node server. I guess server side rendering means like literally server side rendering, not like pre, it's not like static site generation. I guess that's my misunderstanding. So there'd be like, I'd need like a express server or something. And then you would, uh, what? Yeah, it's a different kind of thing. Okay, maybe I don't want to go there. I wonder if there's like Svelte with Gatsby. Probably. I bet the two would like kind of work good together. I don't see any overlap though. Surprisingly, like, is this a thing? I don't know if that's a thing. Sapper? Uh, Sapper looks ex insanely like the Svelte website. Oh, it's part of Svelte. Okay, so they have like a different thing of, of their own here. What's this? Hey, 
Sappers in early development, okay. It's like next. You have roots. Yeah, that's something I can check out another day, I guess. So then it's like its own server, service worker. Okay, so it kind of bridges the gap with some of the stuff I was wondering about. Right, that's cool. I'll check it out another time. So, what? I just want to know how to like change. I don't want it to say Svelte app in my HTML. There's got to be a better way to do that. That would probably be in my. Well, how does that even build? Is this like a static file? Maybe I can just edit this. And then if I run npm run build, does it overwrite that? No, it's just hitting the bundle. Okay, so this is my file. This is where I would do that stuff. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now if I do npm start. And I view source, I have that tic-tac-toe. X-wins. Not bad. Um, I sort of want to tweak the CSS briefly. So let's not set a width and height because we already do on the columns. I'm running not the dev one anymore. Then I can simulate mobile. It's gonna be a bit squa squashed. I mean, that's weird how it like shifts around. Let's go a little bit smaller then. Uh, six. Five. It still like shifts around a little bit. If I go smaller, I think it'll still do it. I think at any size it'll. Oh no, here's not too bad. That is super small. I think it's fine. I'd rather like be decent in both. All right, let's ship it. NPM run build. And now I actually want to see how small it got. So let's go into build, uh, public rather, and it's only 5.7 kilobytes, and gzipped, like 2.4k, with, that's with everything, okay, without CSS, but that's, that's all the JavaScript. It's 2.4K. And that's just like a game changer. That's insane. My favicon is bigger than my JavaScript. I'm just mind blown. This is so cool. Uh, hey, Viable. Yeah, yeah I, was, I haven't tried it, but I was just looking at sapper actually i was gonna want i was wondering if you're gonna pop in viable clan member here has suggested in the past that i do svelte on stream and you missed it sorry but yeah i do want to try sapper maybe i'll do that on another stream so i'm going to germany next week so i will be there for a month and i will probably stream from there if you've watched for a while you know i've done that in the past so Usually that means I'm like on a different time zone though. It'll probably be six hours later. Or wait, yeah. Do I have eight, eight if statements to check if game is one? That's a good guess. Very good guess. I did have eight. <laughs> I was headed that way and then I, I deviated. So I have four, two loops. I check the rows, I check the columns. I check the one diagonal, I check the other diagonal. 
I don't know. I don't know how to do it simpler. I think that's probably it. Anyway, I guess you could do like you could have like some data driven, where you have like a list of coordinates that should match, and then you iterate over those or something. Someone is suggesting X state for you. Is that someone you? And what's X state? Oh, a state machine. Mm, I feel like anything else I would do would be more complicated. I mean, that'd be like a neat like exercise to go through, but I don't, I think, I think that's pretty straightforward for what it is. <laughs> so is that someone new? I, I assume it is. Okay. Um, oh, I'm, yeah, for sure. If it was a more complicated game, like if it was, if I was doing like Othello, Othello would be like crazy. Well, you just check if the board is full. I guess that's how it works, right? But, yeah, like chess. Chess would be very hard. Um, yeah, I think I'm done. So I'm going to commit it. All right. What do I not want to include in my commit? Kind of tripped out because I yeah there's a node modules oh it already created a git ignore for me that's why I'm tripped out like what packages do I have installed is it like a hundred thousand things yeah you know what most of this is from roll up I'm gonna guess if we weren't using roll up and the dev stuff so but the only packages we're directly dependent on is a bunch of roll up. Svelte, which is a dev dependency. I guess that makes sense. And then this is like, this is the CLI they use for the HTTP server, for a static server, to so you can run npm start this stuff. Um, run, run p, I don't know that, is that part of npm run all? Anyway, it's pretty awesome. I'm pretty impressed. I'm not going to call it Svelte app. Let's call it Svelte Tic Tac Toe version 1, sure. I'm not going to publish it to NPM. That'd be silly. Um, TypeScript. I'm not a TypeScript guy, though. I don't use TypeScript at all. But thank you for sharing. What's Surge? Static web publishing for front end. It's like now, or it's like Gatsby, or both. Yeah, it's based on now. Okay, dot sh. Or it's like its own one. Uh, okay. I don't know what it is, but cool. That's not what you were showing me. You were showing me probably what it looks like to use TypeScript with, oh, so you do lang ts. I don't see any TypeScript annotations. What's the, like, this is not a good example because it's not actually doing anything. Okay. And do you have to do special? Yeah, okay. And there's like Svelte TS preprocess, okay. So it's not like built in, but it's like doable. Yeah, it's good. Like for people who like TypeScript, that's awesome. For people who don't, I don't recommend it. Um, yeah, so let's add all my code. Should public be ignored? And is it already? I guess so. Or what? I forget if it was in the git ignore. 
Uh, the bundle itself, not the so the index.html is going to be. Didn't I do this? Oh, I'm in the public folder. That's why. Uh, rather. All right, so pretty good. Global CSS. Oh, okay. So that's like not part of Svelte, but like outside. Because the CSS I rendered is part of bundle. Dot. Yeah, that's cool how it did this. That's really neat. So it just uses these class names. Um, that's great. OK, enough of this. We're still good. Commit new. And I'll just say make a new tic tac toe game using Svelte. I don't have to say new. And we'll push it. So if you're interested in playing around specifically with the tic tac toe game, for whatever reason, I don't expect anyone is, but if you are, um, well, it's here. What? I already have a vulnerability. I just made it. WS. It must be like a, a dependency of. Like, where did that come from? I don't even know. Why do I have that? To my package lock? For the hot module reloading? Yeah, probably. I don't like that, that I just. So it's probably in serve. Oh, isn't there a way to like, why am I, why is this thing installed with NPM? Um, you can do NPM tree or something like that. NPM. LS or list. Yeah, there. So where's WS? Oh, can I just do a WS? There we go. Live reload. Roll up plug in live reload. Have they updated it? This is really like not relevant to anything I was doing, but they're still on 101. Am I on 101? 100. Let's go 101. Get rid of that vulnerability, I assume. Um, fix vulnerability with WS package. Still not. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. That would be an easier way to do it. Oh, it didn't let me push because I don't think I have a. No, it didn't have any. But now I can't push because I have a vulnerability. I'm confused. How do I fix it? No, it did push it. No? I'm so confused now. Like... In my package lock, I would have. Oh, maybe it didn't actually install. Like, I don't know. Maybe something was weird. But if I do npm audit, there's nothing wrong, right? Oh, GitHub might have its own thing about that. Um, I'm really confused right now. Didn't 
No, I don't think so. Like, I did the commit. It changed this. It didn't change my package lock, is that why? Does it create an issue? I don't think so. Is it just like on here until it goes away? Yeah, do I like have to close this specifically? Can I, can I click this? What would happen? It's going to think about what to do. I can dismiss it. Vulnerable code isn't actually used is a good point. I mean, I guess it is. Risk is tolerable to this project, that's true. No bandwidth to fix this, that's a funny one. What's it gonna do? It's thinking about it, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna find it. I guess it's in the package lock. So I need to like, I guess if I delete the package lock and then then it's not in it. And I should add package lock to the git ignore or should. I don't know if it's the right thing, but if I do an npm install now, it'll create a package lock. Which hasn't changed. I don't think it's that. Oh I like I like that advice. And get rm package lock .json. and we should be good. Remove package lock from repo. That should uh, that should help too. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I did it. So don't commit package lock. Uh, or you can, but whatever. And my readme is obviously weird, but cool. I think we're good. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Um, like I said, I'll probably be on quite a bit later for the next month. Like, I'll probably start usually 8 p.m. Eastern something like that, so it'll be more evening streams, because it'll be afternoon for me in Germany. Um, or I might try to start a bit earlier to kind of bridge the gap. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll hope you check out Svelte. It's pretty amazing. Thanks, Utsby. And I could see a viable. And I'll... And Fourierian. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.